Today I'm going to talk about smoldering multiple myeloma and a risk for developing systemic light chain or AL amyloidosis. Smoldering myeloma has been well defined now for about 35 years. It's a disease in which patients have plasma cells in their bone marrow in excess of 10% of the marrow and have evidence in their blood or urine of a monoclonal protein made by those plasma cells. But, and it's a big but, there is no evidence of organ damage. The kidneys are fine, the bones are fine, the blood counts are fine. But there is risk, and the risk historically has been uh, a risk of progression to multiple myeloma. That's what's been highlighted. By multiple myeloma, I mean a risk to progression of myeloma requiring therapy. However, almost 10% of patients with smoldering myeloma who progress in the first five years after diagnosis progress to a disease called systemic AL, amyloidosis. Amyloid is a protein deposit that is formed from the free light chains that are made by the plasma cells in the bone marrow. Now what's interesting, and the reason I'm connecting these two diagnoses, is that it takes a certain type of light chain to form amyloid. And we know that the light chain genes that produce amyloid forming light chains are small in number, they're restricted. Seven light chain variable region genes are responsible for 70% of the cases of light chain amyloid. In the US, about 9,000, 10,000 patients a year are diagnosed with smoldering myeloma. Only about 3,000 patients are diagnosed with AL amyloidosis. We are conducting an important study to help patients who have lambda light chain smoldering myeloma learn whether or not they have or are at risk of having AL amyloidosis. We do this by obtaining blood cells from patients after they've gone through a consent and screening process, and also by obtaining bone marrow cells from patients at a time when their doctors determine that a bone marrow is needed. We examine these cells very carefully for evidence of AL amyloidosis light chain genes. The five genes that we're looking at are all lambda light chain genes, and therefore we restrict this trial to patients with lambda light chain smoldering myeloma. Other aspects of the study include interaction on a regular basis with the principal investigator and other physicians who are coordinating this trial, as well as the opportunity to have your medical records examined uh, in order to determine whether or not you're eligible and also whether or not there's any evidence of um, a, an issue that should be examined by your physician. The likelihood that AL amyloidosis will be identified as a result of participation in this trial, as well as the likelihood that a risk for AL amyloidosis may be identified, is about 2%. There's about one chance in 40 that will identify a patient who has or is at risk of having AL amyloidosis. But because AL amyloidosis involves the heart in over half of patients and early diagnosis is critical, in those few patients in whom we make this association, the effort that uh, is uh, involved will be well worth it for those patients. So. Uh, Information on the SAVE trial, Seeking AL Amyloidosis Very Early, is available in other areas of this uh, website, and uh, it will involve both contacting us and providing us with informed consent uh, to review medical records, and also the possibility that if your lambda light chain gene numbers are too low, that you might not be eligible for screening. Uh, I urge you to take a look at that information, and if it looks like you're potentially eligible, to contact us and to allow us to screen you for testing 
uh, for this uh, uh, potential uh, of developing ALM amyloidosis. Thank you.